together to learn about permaculture stuff and share ideas and, and you know help each other out and I, I realized that permaculture the word is kind of nebulous I mean the average person has no idea what the word means when you introduce it you know how do you how do you explain it you might have a good spiel but it's still it's not it's not visual right so I think that there's something to be said for really telling the story of permaculture visually to as many people as you can and little videos like that, I'm hoping, will help spread that so people can kind of, it'll soak in a little bit, you know? Um, yeah, so anyway, trying to make it fun. Should be a party. There's not a lot of dubstep in permaculture. <laughs> so, once this is actually like fully developed and everything, how many people are you estimating? That is a lovely question. Hmm. How many people, how many people per acre can this farm support at full maturation and development? I don't know, but I would say over 200. It's a 145 acre farm. Okay. I think about stacked enterprises and all the opportunities that are there. I mean, could I have a full time Hertz person now? There could be four or five people doing that. Could all be living on site. Um, definitely could be an on site dairy. Don't have the manpower to do that. Um, there could be uh, timber products on site, as far as tree harvest and carving and, and you know, coppicing, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's limitless. So that's the next question, is how do you build a, a community that actually works, that's actually functional? Um, and consensus is not the answer. No. Anarchy is the answer, right? So how do you, how do you and I, I run, I'm running into a lot of issues, is how do you do something awesome with complete anarchy in a county that is the most highly regulated in your state, right? So. How do you have a composting toilet in five crazy trailers and, and not get rolled on? It's, it's really damn hard. I think the best answer is move to the driftless and keep your head down. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. I, I, I think that's that... That's cable from the driftless. Yeah. I think keep, keep, your, uh, keep your tribe strong and, and offer opportunities and uh, yeah. So you're surrounded by Corn and soy, I presume. And Pretty all. much. I've got a really cool neighbor, homesteader, CSA type on, on one corner of the farm. And then there's some timber on the north, and then the rest of it's just GMO, as far so as the eye can see. You have buffer strips in around the yep. perimeter of your farm? Yep. Property. Entire perimeter of the farm that borders any conventional field is a 30 foot wide pollinator planting. So it's, you know, black locust perimeter fence right on the property border, 30 foot of, of wildflowers and pollinators, and that, you know, whatever you can do. Um, organic standards require you to have a, an offset, so anything that's harvested inside from that is legit for organic, but you want to have a buffer there. Um, as far as tree buffers for herbicide drift go, it's tough because in the, my area, the first applications are before anything leaves out, period. So there's no natural barrier. 240 will volatilize from two miles away. You can smell it every time something gets sprayed. So are you ever truly free? Probably not, until the EMP happens and we're all good. But <laughs> Um, I'm making do as best I can. One thing that's really funny is like, okay, you put all this pollinator habitat on the perimeter as closest to the you know, neonicotinoid seed coatings mm -hmm. floating off and all the herbicides. It's just like, mm -hmm. well, it's something. And there, we have internal plantings too, but bees travel two miles. You can't police them, tell them where to go, you know? Mm -hmm. um, is, there, is there a requirement that it has to be? A pollinator. No, but I said if it's going to be waste area, it might as well be cool. 
You know? <laughs> no, no, another opportunity. We have probably four acres of flowers going off all year round. I don't have time to harvest them. We went to market once and sold like 150 bucks in a day. Mm. You know, I, I need somebody there who can come cut flowers all summer and go harvest them and sell. You know, it can support a lot as far as livelihoods per acre. Yeah. Sure. Uh, at present, zero irrigation. Just got a well in basically last year. Didn't even have anything running off of it. Um, did get an equip contract, environmental quality incentives program through NRCS, to put in a, a livestock pipeline elsewhere on the farm, which could be presumably used for irrigation long term. Haven't got it in yet. Everything was just sink or swim, plant it out, high density. If it rains, it rains. If it doesn't, you all die. We're hauling, we're hauling water, which is the shame. We've got a, a portable water tank where we'll fill them up and then drive it up to them. Um, but in time, as infrastructure and time and money allows, it, it's developed. Yep. What about har harvesting? You said it's, you mentioned mechanized. So yeah, so the vast majority of fruit crops beyond some berry crops are pre-yielding. Pre There's still growing. Um, berries are hand harvested right now. Do have some monocultural honeyberry plantings in place, um, which can be straddle harvested with a mechanical harvester, probably next year. Um, and in my area, there is an aronia co-op. I think an aronia plant is great if you've got four of them, but as far as a marketable crop, it's I think it's ridiculous. I don't know if anyone agrees or disagrees with me. Um, but a lot of people plant aronia in Iowa, like a lot. And the ones that got smart realized they had to get together with a cooperative to harvest them because hand harvesting aronia that then sells for a dollar a pound is a pretty hard sell. Um, especially competing with Poland where they're you know, mechanically harvesting everything. So they bought in a, a, a blueberry straddle harvester. So it's self-propelled, goes over the row, shakes all the berries off, they pick them up and get them in totes at the end. Aronia harvesting season is, is like now. Honeyberry harvesting season is June. Um, bush cherry harvesting after that. I think that the idea of having community-based assets that can be used over you know, spreading energy flows over the course of the season that has multiple purposes is a really good thing. So I've already talked to them. We will lease that machine for honeyberries when it comes to it. So build a mechanical harvest it. But are your honeyberries planted in rows that, that machines can? Yeah, some of them are. Most of like. Uh, the most plants, as far as like a numbers basis, are very much in rows monoculturally. I do have a lot of them interplanted in these crazy curvilinear yep. polycultures. Yep. Those will have to be hand harvested and or really damn great pig food. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the other ones can be shell harvested. Yeah. You have a lot of diversity here. Do you know like top five things that you think is going to get you the most return on investment? Yep. I, and that's definitely put some time into that. So I'm just going to talk real fast here. So when you run enterprise budgets, which is the way of looking at any crop and saying, okay, here's what it's going to cost to put it in. Here's what expected cash flows out of what are. Um, most of them are prepared by academic, you know, extension agents, right? And it's all monocultural. It's like, okay, one acre of chestnuts or one acre of apples. So to do this polyculture stuff, really the only thing you can do is run it three times, let's say, apples, plums and chestnuts, and then divide by three and then make your labor cost a little bit higher because you're gonna have you know, this incrementally higher labor cost to walk a little bit farther down the road to get the next tree. Um, let's say you have a pure stand of chestnuts planted to all the standards. It'll do about 4,000 pounds an acre in yield if it's irrigated and, and grafted good varieties, right? So 4,000 pounds of chestnuts at Wholesale value of $3 a pound is about $12,000 an acre in gross proceeds, right? So at year 15, you're looking at $12,000 an acre in gross, right? Not counting labor costs, blah, blah, blah. Um, now, if it's dessert quality organic fruit, that'll do 20,000 pounds an acre at three or $4 a pound, you're talking 60 or $80,000 in gross receipts. And it's really easy to pick an apple tree. Um, so apples and, and fruit, fresh fruit will market way higher than most nut crops per acre. And there's a lot of 
buzz about chestnuts and hazelnuts in the world right now, but I, I maintain that fruit crops, if you're just trying to make money in permaculture, fruit crops will be way better. Um, and then, like, I'm gluten-free. The cider industry, you know, gluten-free anything is, is a growing, growing trend, hugely, even if that's chestnut flour. Um, so the idea of, the, of getting organic cider for, or getting organic apples for cider production is really hard to get, and people pay for the nose for it right now. So being ahead of the curve as far as having cider varieties or heirloom varieties is a big thing. You have a follow-up question. Yeah, I have another question. Um, do you have a limit on your sellable diversity for the farm? Do I have a limit yeah. on my sellable diversity? Yeah. Explain. Um, like you have a lot of diversity in terms of crops and berries and, you know, fruits and stuff, but are you just going to try to keep getting more diverse or what's your centerpiece? Uh, I have a limit in, in management time to be able to spread myself amongst those things, yeah. Um, and at present I see myself as the person who is stupid enough and crazy enough to get it in the ground and then letting others run with each enterprise as their own thing. Because there's no way I can do any of them. You can't do that many things well. Um, so ideally, someone's running with livestock, paying an incremental rent fee for a pasture, you know, so on and so forth. But um, in 10 years, ideally, I see an on-farm cidery um, marketing grass-based livestock at scale. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Thank <laughs> you.